Hi friends, Wizdy here. Welcome to a new Raid Shadow Legends video. Today I'll do a guide on the Apex only Dragon teams that you can use for tournaments for those special tournaments when they release them. There is no such tournament right now at the time of this video release, but let's do the guide anyways and I'll do a refresher or something when there are, there are tournaments. I'll do also the same for the other dungeons as well, but today's video is going to focus on Dragon, trying to make it as simple as possible as we always do, just simplifying everything to a two-factor rule, maybe that's a new thing that I'll invent because the game is too complex. For those sort of side quests, if we cannot shrink it down to only like two factors, what you need to do about them, the game will be ever more complex and we don't want that. So let's dive into the guide. I'll tell you everything you need to know. And then we will test multiple teams together today just to show you how they work. The first thing to talk about why you should do those tournaments and when you should do them. And then the stage and what time it should take you for this tournament. Why you should do this tournament? Usually these are special events for soul stones or like heroes pass or something like this or for prism uh, summons. Prism summons are becoming more and more like uh, important after they added the mercy to it. Usually the prism summon pool got some of the best champions in the game which brings us to the second point which is when you should do this. You should have enough energy saved that you're not using for anything else because this is sort of a side quest and your level of gear and champs should be high enough that you don't need to build anyone specific for this. And that's why I chose stage 20. St stage 20 normal, most videos talking about the same topic are choosing uh, stage 20 normal though some of them are talking about Dragonheart. Why stage 20 normal? Because you can do it fast enough if you have good gear and you just gain the points and that's it. Can you do it on hard? Yes, but the percentage of players who can farm dragon fast enough with an epic only team on dragon hard is very small. So I'm talking to like the biggest, the majority of us. Uh, stage 20 normal, anyone who's past mid game can do this comfortably with, her, with his epics that he just built. Two minutes is the limit that I'm putting here. Again, this is a side quest that you might doing beside like your normal progression or a fusion or something, so this shouldn't take too long. If you build the whole team of just like support champions and just a poisoner uh, for the dragon and it takes you forever, that's not a way to do this tournament. My advice is if you, if you don't have a team that can farm dragon 20 normal in a minute to two minutes maximum, just skip these. Uh, probably there is other stuff in the game that you should invest in before just focusing on these. But yeah, in case in case you want to do them, of course you can. You can also do the same, by the way, if you, your account uh, level is not high enough. If you can do it fast enough at stages 13 or 17, do this. But I think you'll have like better stuff to do, other stuff to focus on. If you're not doing stage 20 fast enough yet, don't waste like thousands of energy, literally. Uh, to get those points on stage 13 or 17 because it will eat up more energy from you you're not as efficient as uh, stage 20 normal but again it's your decision if you want to do it in st uh, at stage 13 or 17 feel free to do so now let's yeah. move to the next item that you'll need and i'll always keep the two-factor rule going forward it makes things simple if i can the only two things you need uh, to tackle dragon 20 epics only tournaments and all of that you need just wave specialists and boss specialists. You need someone to take care of the waves fast enough and then someone to take care of the boss fast enough. So that's th those are the only two factors. The champion that we'll talk about here on the slides and the teams that I will show you, these are just examples. If you don't have these specific champions, uh, look for someone who can fill the same role. And if you're not sure, just ask me in the comments here or come to Discord and, and I'm happy to help you like build your own team. So these are examples of wave specialists here. Of course, Seer is one of like the strongest wave specialists that can really speed your farming th there. Uh, the struggles that you'll face with Seer build uh, based teams on Apex only, that there's only one champion to reset uh, her skills, which is Nia. I don't like Nia, I don't like the inconsistency of her kit, on, uh, especially when you're doing farming on auto, but you can use Seer just to clear the first wave and then she'll circle like fast enough to her, uh, her skills and everything. But other examples here are strong AoE damage dealers. Like we have for example the Sinesha Skull Crown combo, if you 
pair them with FARC in the fat, for example, these can nuke the waves really fast. And then the second wave will take a minute, but that's usually the case. It's not an issue. Uh, Felia, Neldor, very strong damage dealer. So maybe, maybe not the best for waves. These are no specific uh, order. Then we have the new lizard, Ethelin and Zargala. All of these are good examples of strong wave dam damage dealers, AOE damage dealers that can clear the waves fast enough. One thing to keep in mind here, stage 20 is magic, and that's why in a lot of the uh, champ exam examples that I'll show in the video today, I'll stick to either magic or force or void uh, champions, so they are not weak affinity if your gear level is not strong enough. So these are the wave specialists. After this, we have the boss specialist. Someone to take care of the boss fast enough, of course, as we all know, the best way to tackle the boss, the dragons uh, in our case here, is poisons. We need poisons and lots of poisons to take care of the boss. And then there are no secrets here. The best champions do this. Dark Kale, everyone will get. I'm hiding Dark. I'm hiding Dark Kale behind me, but he's one of the best uh, single target damage dealers, AoE as well. But for as a boss specialist, Dark Kale is top tier here. Venomage, Eurogrim. And of course, we have the enemy max speed champions, but we have to use the epic ones. So we have Royal Garden Husk, of course, Whisper, my new, one of my new favorites, though she does just pure damage. But if you build your Whisper fast enough for uh, Shogun or Doom Tower hard, she can take care of Dragon 20 with no issues at all. Leburga and then Oboro, of course. I would advise against using Jeyu, actually, because... Jeyu's damage is based on the boss hitting him, the dragon hitting him. And we don't want to make this run so long. If your gear level, especially your speed, is fast enough with these champions, you can take the boss down without him taking too many turns. While if you're using Jeyu, you'll have to wait for the boss to take a few turns for the for Jeyu's passive to work and take the boss down. So Jeyu is a last resort sort of thing. He's good as a boss killer, of course, everywhere, but for our specific purpose today, he might not be the best. You have a team of five, one or two champs will take care of the waves, one or two champs will take care of the boss, then you're left with one or two spots. What are these for? These are for your support champions. Champions that will put buffs on you or positive effects and champions that will put negative effects on either the waves or the boss to make this run go faster. First of all, example of the buffing champions, of course we have the two champions that fit best as seer companions. So we have Archmage Helmet and Mausoleum Mage at, in the middle here, with Nea of course to reset the skills if you need them, but these champions, they are buffing the team, keeping the team healthy, moving fast and all of that stuff, but also giving seer buffs so she can clear those waves faster. Uh, Tagore, yeah, you can see Tagore behind me is one of the best support champions. Tagore and Ursula, other than buffing the teams, uh, probably also Skathex and Hophoris as well. They are putting buffs on the team, useful buffs, but at the same time, they are revivers. They are sort of your insurance policy in case a run goes wild and you lose a champion there. I also love uh, Croydon the Blue more and more uh, the more I use him. He can be your buffer, your control champion with phrases, your wave damage dealer. He's really a very solid epic to use everywhere. Again, these are just examples. The so list is if you have another champion who fills the same role and is an epic, of course, that's not on that list, feel free to use them, of course. The other, the other side of this is the buffs, of course, putting the buffs on the waves or the boss just to make that uh, run go faster. Madam Sir is the old OG for decreased attack for the boss and waves and decreased defense, so you can nuke those waves faster. Ugu is a very good champion healing your team, but also in our case here, putting up decreased defense. What I also try to do here is um, I try to give examples of champions that you might have built anyways, so that you don't have to build specific champions for those kind of tournaments. So if you have those champs built anyways, you feel you can, you're just using them he here. Farrakhan the Fat is another great example of someone who does a light attack, puts HP burns and poisons on the boss, and of course he can work perfectly, as I was mentioning before, 
in a blender comp with like Sunesha and Skull Crown to take care of the waves fast enough. That's the whole theory behind like building epic only teams. Now let's jump into the game and try a few of these teams to show you how they work and how fast they work. On purpose, I will not rebuild any champions for this purpose or do an AI setup because my level of gear might be a little bit better than yours. And we, we will check like the gear after we try a few teams just to see uh, what we'll do here. So let me build the first team and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so this is the first team, just an example. Buffer for Seer and then I'd want to use a reset champion. Ugo's faster than Seer to put the crease defense. And then Neldor for the waves, just helping with the waves. And uh, Dark Kale to take care of the boss. So let's see how fast this run will go. And as I said, this team is not optimized on purpose so that it's closer to your gear level. So let's see. First wave is down in 9 seconds with Seer of course. And then let's see how fast we'll take care of the second wave. For this team to work perfectly, of course Archimage does the stuns, helping you not to get hit by the waves. If I clear this wave in like 40 seconds and then we spend another 20-30 seconds on the boss, then that's a good epic only team. And then as you can see, they are circling because they are faster than level 20 uh, mobs. They circle back fast enough to their skills that probably will kill the wave without having to wait for Seer to get back to her wave clear. But yeah, she got back to it. 44 seconds for the waves. Of course, with an optimized team, it can go faster. But you don't need it to go faster. Uh, just regearing champions for this. We are debuffing the boss, decrease attack. And then I'm just waiting for Dark Ale to start putting poisons uh, on the boss. And then pop those poisons. In a typical uh, Seer team uh, of this nature, if built specially for this... You want everyone to be squishy enough except for Dark Kale or Venomage, whoever is taking care of the boss. So as soon as they get to the boss, the boss kills everyone except your boss damage dealer. So this will end up being like probably a minute 40 run, which is not bad. But like I said, optimized runs probably will go faster. Uh, for me that I didn't have to rebuild anyone for this, it's good enough for me. And it's within that two minute hard limit uh, that I said to myself. So yeah, 145, not that bad, it's okay. Our second team as an example is a fast squishy team. Let's see if this team is built well enough to take care of the boss and the waves. Uh, maybe it will go faster than the other team, but let's see. And of course you can mix and match whatever factors you want. Like here, Madam Sirs is debuffing the waves. Uh, Farrakhan the Fat is helping kill the waves with Skull Crown. So let's see how fast we'll take it. Of course, nothing takes down the waves as fast as Seer. So we cleared the first wave in 20 seconds instead of uh, 9 seconds. But of course, this all damage team can take care of the second wave faster. And instead of waiting for Seer to circle back to her wave clear, and also, let's see if we'll take any hits here. This team is very squishy. I don't have any support champions on it. And yeah, I just wanted to show you all options here. Like, Fark in the Fat is negative affinity, but he got his passive and he's so good that you can use him. Even uh, negative affinity, it won't matter. Another example of spirit champions that you might want to use here is Deacon, of course. Uh, Deacon Armstrong. But yeah, so... We clear the wave in one minute, just a little bit slower than the first team because there is no seer for wave one. But let's see here if Venomage, Farak in the Fat and Whisper can take care of the pop boss faster to beat our time of one, one minute 45 seconds for the first team we tried here. And of course we can try lots of combinations here. Uh, but I think yeah, that will cover most of the aspects we talked about. Look at how much damage Whisper is doing. Oh, no, there is a third team that I want to try with you because it's very valid for this as well. So we'll try it after this one. Looks like we're targeting the same time anyways. So 145. Okay, 150. Come on. Okay, so 150. It's five minutes slower. And I'll show you the builds for everyone after we're done here. So Let the last team I want to show you is with, without poisons, just using uh, 
enemy max HP damage dealers. And of course you can use two Royal Guards or two Husks or whatever, especially if you have them built for Hydra and other places. My Husk and Royal Guard builds are not that good. So yeah, you see, but we're, we're taking care of the waves fast enough. They won't be like, if, the, if these are your best champions and you're using them in high level Hydra, let's say hard or brutal, probably you can clear the waves way faster than I'm doing here. And for support or buffs, I added Hoforis because like I have him built and I wanted to show you an option that's not a common one to use. So we're taking care of the waves. Looks like it's faster than our old damage team. But let's see uh, how fast we can get to the boss and how fast we can take care of the boss. Okay, we're almost done with wave two. Unfortunately, Royal Guard just used his enemy max HP hit here. So that will slow us down on the boss a little bit. And of course, if you'll be, if you'll be using this team frequently, build AI setup to prevent Husk and Royal Guard from using their enemy max HP on wave two. So you can save this for the boss. But let's see how fast we can tackle the boss. Again, just to balance my liver of gear, I didn't do any AI setup and I didn't change the gear on these champions. If you have Royal Garden Husk and you're using them, 100% you'll have them built better than I built mine. We're almost done here, but the last team let us down a little bit time-wise. Three minutes is too long uh, to do this type of tournament. Now let's check the gear on everyone. Let's um, sort by recently used first. Hoforis is a no specific build, that's leftover gear. And he didn't play any specific factor here. If he's your buffer, he should be faster. Like yeah, uh, HP and defense are okay, but he should be way faster above 220 um, speed, I would say. Skull Crown is built as my just campaign farmer. So yeah, uh, these are okay stats for Skull Crown, I believe. 5.6k attack, 100% crit rate, 250 crit damage, and around 200 speed if you can have heard that. Now let's check Husk. Look at this. Like, why am I even building him in uh, lifesteal? So he's way slower. Without even, he doesn't even have 100% crit rate. Uh, how you want to build your Husk? You want to build him at 200 speed. Let's say I'm talking for this or for other places. 100% crit rate. 250 crit damage and then the other stats don't uh, matter much if you give him some accuracy he can have he has a stun and a provoke on the a1 for other areas if not for the enemy uh, max hp part my royal guard is in savage way too slow so you want to have uh, yeah some accuracy on him he has useful debuffs but you want him like let's say these are good stats 100 crit rate 240 percent crit damage but you want him at least at 200 speed and yeah, the accuracy is fine. So that's my Royal Guard. Uh, my Whisper and Relentless. These are like, I've shown uh, Whisper on a dedicated video before. These are good stats for her. 5k attack, 270% crit damage with 100% crit rate, above 200 speed and Relentless really suits her. So let's move to Farak and the Fat. How do you want to build your Fark in the Fat? Fast and accurate, that's it. There is no other formula to it. If you give him some crit, he can do some damage. Then Venomage. Venomage, all of the high-end dungeons and other areas because she's depending mostly on her accuracy and the buffs to do damage. So building her in Regen and Immortal is the best thing here. My Venomage is not too fast, so probably you can get to that speed with enough accuracy, that's it. Uh, also, if you give her enough defense and HP just to survive those hits, not for this run. I'm talking about Centranus Hard, Amius, and all of the other places, um, Doom Tower Hard bosses and that sort of thing. And of course, like here, I'm not even depending on her damage. It's all about her accuracy. My Seer is built for damage. Uh, probably want your Seer in Savage or Lethal. Mine is not there yet. Uh, but it's, she works fine. So 300 crit damage, 230 speed, nothing else matter. If you build accuracy into, into Seer, she can be useful, but that's all you need. Dark Air, again. So I had Dark Air in Regen and Immortal, 
but I switched him to like four pieces on stone skin just because I had the accessories. It helped him in certain areas. 250 speed, this is a bit too high. 220 might be enough for the purposes. 350 accuracy is not bad. I built him with some resistance as well and then some HP and defense. So that's a good build, I would say, for Dark Kale. Dark Mage Helmet, you want to give him a more chance masteries wise to do his stuns but you also build him just fast and accurate. Uh, this is left leftover gear, so good accuracy and fast, that's all you need on your Archmage helmet. Neldor, I've, I've shown him in multiple videos because I'm using him in my Fire Knight Heart team. What do you want on your Neldor? This is too fast, so this is in-game Fire Knight Heart in speeds. 100% crit rate, accuracy, and 200% crit damage will help him clear the waves, uh, but yeah. And my Ugo is built for Hydra, so 250 speed with some resistance and accuracy and that's it. Uh, yeah, you don't need anything else uh, on your Ugo. These are the teams, this is Apex only Dragon Guide. If you like the two-factor role for all of the aspects, let me know, I'll use it more and maybe it will become a thing. So thank you for tuning in today, I'll see you next time, bye.